everybody, Omar here, the Knife of the Party guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at an impulse buy of mine. Uh, this is a totally unexpected purchase, but I had to have this knife. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at what I have underneath here. Uh, so let's just get right into it. The knife we're going to be taking a look at uh, is from Knife Maker. Trevor Berger. Trevor Berger made this Lexcape Plus. Uh, it's an M390 with an M390 blade. We've got Damascus and marble carbon fiber for the handles, plus Damascus uh, pocket clip and ceramic pivot. Made November of 2021. There is Trevor Berger's famous signature. Uh, yeah, this knife cost me... A lot of fucking money. <laughs> I can't. I can't just say that. So I wanted to get that out of the way, and I am not going to say how much. But yeah, it cost me quite a bit. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this guy. I'm so delirious over it, over what I spent for this one. So, so let's go ahead and take a look. You get a case with the knife, and here it is. So I'm going to give you guys a good, quick look at it. I mean, the case is really nothing special. It's just a regular generic case. That's one of the things about Trevor Berger. Uh, he doesn't give you... He's not into, like, fancy cases. Some of the uh, South, South African night makers, you know, like Andre Thorburn and J.D. Van De Vinter and all those other guys, they, they do, like, really special stuff with the cases. Uh, Trevor Berger just, you know, puts the knife in something, and hopefully the knife will speak for him for itself, and in this case it does. So let's take a good, quick look at it. Here it is. And it all of its like beautiful glory. We've got Damascus bolsters and marble carbon fiber uh, scales on both sides. Uh, and it has a beautiful Damascus pocket clip. Again, the blade is M390. And the blade shape, since I already have my little uh, naps mat out, what we've got here is a spear point. If you guys can see that, it's a spear point blade. Um, yeah, this is really, really amazing piece. This is a front flipper knife. Absolutely gorgeous. I can't stop looking at it. I've been posting this thing all day for the last three days on Instagram. Uh, I bought it from my buddy James, who I don't think really wanted to get rid of it, but he saw that I was like really Googling over it uh, when he, you know, when I repeatedly asked him to uh, shoot me videos of this knife. I kept, I kept badgering him and badgering him. Finally, I broke him down and he said, all right, you want the knife, you can have it. I'll sell it to you. So he sold it to me and uh, I am very, very grateful for that. So, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the specs, and I'm going to talk about the knife and uh, how this is kind of like a game changer for me. So, the specs for this knife uh, is brought to you by the Blade Gallery. <laughs> I'm using there because they're the ones that actually have the specs. Uh, we have a blade length of 3.3 inches. Uh, cutting length is 3.25 the total length of the knife is close to 8 inches. It's 7.7 .7 inches uh, long. And the knife weighs approximately uh, 3.6 ounces. And we have M390 blade. So let's talk about this knife for a little bit. Um, <laughs> I don't know, we know where to begin. Uh, the, the only thing that would stop this from being a full dress piece is if, if, is if the blade were, uh, if the blade were a, uh, a Damascus blade. I forgot to mention that the backspacer on this knife also has black Damascus in. This is one of the things that I love about this knife. We've got black Damascus running from the bottom of the backspacer all the way up to the top, and that is just what I love. I only like to types of construction on a knife. 
total open construction where you would have just like the pivot and like one standoff. I love that. And I love this where it's open, where there's a backspacer that covers the entire knife. That I love. Not into those half backspacers. I've said that quite a lot. It just kind of interrupts my eye. Uh, so I would prefer it either to be completely open or completely closed. And in this case, with the purple or the black Damascus covering it, it's just amazing. Just amazing. So, really can't get enough of looking at it. The construction is a liner lock knife, as you guys can see. And, uh... This is part one of the video. Part two, I'm going to bring up the uh, liner, the uh, the frame lock version of this knife, and we're going to compare the two. But I just wanted to get, give you guys a good look at this one. Trevor Berger has been around for quite a while. His dad is pretty much one of the fathers of knife making in South Africa, along with Des Horn uh, and Owen Wood. Uh, the guy's a legend, Fred Berger. Uh, in fact, it's Trevor Berger's father. Uh, he didn't invent the front flipper, but he popularized it, and that's more than enough for most of us knife makers. He actually brought the front flipper uh, knife over to South Africa. It kind of grew and became very, very popular. Uh, I, in my opinion, it looks like more to the, to his promotion. Um, the gentleman who actually invented the front flipper it is said to be a gentleman named Freddie Lagrange in South Africa. He actually invented it. And, uh, yeah, Fred Berger saw the front flipper and decided to bring it over to South Africa. And then it became very, very popular due to his promotion. And so now a, a majority of South Africans prefer the front flipper blade. Let's talk about the blade shape for a little bit on this knife, because it is really, it, it's not um, rare, but you don't see it too often, and that's the spear point blade. The spear point blade is very close to a drop point blade, but it's much more rounded uh, overall, whereas the drop point blade is sort of like a straight cut across, and then you have, you know, sort of this rounded edge down here at the bottom with good belly. This is the same thing, except that on a spear point, the uh, cutting edge practically mimics the top part of the of the blade, so it's sort of like a mirror image, I guess, almost. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, the spear point. This is this would be practically a spear point almost. You know, it does kind of um, produce like a funky looking blade because a lot of us are used to seeing the draw point there. But uh, yeah, this is very, very, very nice shape. Uh, one thing I wanted to, to get to about this blade, about the knife, is actually the blade itself and the way that it was done. Uh, it's kind of like almost an illusion Almost, if we if we take take a look at the blade on this knife, let's turn it up this way so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. So the top of the knife, as you can see, it's kind of nice and flat over here, right? Real, real flat, real flat. And then it reaches a point on the blade where it's crowned. You know what I mean? So it's almost like an illusion, like it's it's kind of like flat up here and then it goes down to a point but when it gets to about this point it's no longer flat it's actually crowned and the reason I mention that it's an illusion is because there's no swedge I don't see a swedge or it's difficult to find this wedge the swedge is the point where the blade kind of meets itself to a point so you can see where the blade was was crowned, but on this knife you can't really tell. It just goes flat, 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 then crowned immediately with no swedge in it. And I just kept staring at that, and I don't, I have no idea how Trevor Berger did that as far as shaping the knife. Keep in mind, you guys realize that this knife is made completely by hand. There are no machines for this piece. Uh, like most of my knives, they are all, almost all my knives are made by hand. Very few are CNC machined. Uh, the jimping on the knife is perfect. Uh, I think it might be a little bit, it'd be better if it was up a little bit higher, but most knife makers don't do that for whatever reason. I mean, you, you know, you get a, you can still get good enough purchase. It's also not aggressive. Um, 
gym thing so you can get a good good hold on it. The ergonomics are perfect. They feel really great uh, in my hand. Um, it is very smooth. Very, very smooth knife. Opens very easily. This has a medium, soft to medium detent. Uh, Trevor Burger is actually pretty famous for soft detents, but uh, you know, on this one he made it sort of soft medium, uh, which is kind of perfect for me. That's the way I kind of like it. Um, really nice lines on the knife. I love the roundedness of the knife and how it's kind of linear in some places, uh, which is part of the sculpture of the Lex K uh, of the Lex K knife. It was built pretty much to have curves and linear lines in the in the perfect uh, spots so that when you hold the knife, it fills your hand. A lot of knives have uh, handles that are so funky. <laughs> it takes you about an hour and a half to figure out how am I supposed to hold this thing to use it. Uh, Trevor Burger just gives it to you. Perfect spot on. You don't have to think. You just put it in your hand and get ready to go and use it. Um, this is really just a stunning knife. You know, everywhere you look on this knife, everything just pops, including, uh, obviously, the uh, Tamascus pocket clip is a big popping point on this knife. Um, the bolsters really shine on it. It's just a great combination of materials. Uh, while I do love the black Tamascus um, backspacer on this knife, I think it kind of gets lost a little bit uh, because it doesn't shine uh, like like the uh, pocket clip and the bolsters, but yet you notice that it's there. It's just not shining as much. So, I mean, if you took a quick glance at it, you probably would think, they, well, gee, look, you put down the G10 on there. When really he didn't, he put black Damascus covering it. It's those, uh, and you can't see it, but it's the gray streaks in the black Damascus that make it black Damascus. Otherwise, it's like a big hunk of purple stuff on there, but... Yeah, see, you can't really see those streaks that I'm talking about, but they're there. You just have to look really closely. Just an overall fantastic knife. The marble carbon fiber on it is really stunning. Uh, one of the reasons my good buddy Jim was kind of willing to let it go, uh, probably because you can see squares in the marble carbon fiber. See, there's like a square there. It kind of like interrupts your eye a little bit. There's another one here, and then there's another one there. And if you keep looking at it, all you see are those squares. But I, it doesn't bother me one bit. I mean, I, I still looks like I still think the knife looks stunning. The construction of the knife, I love these little teeny tiny screws uh, where they're so small. They're just there for like a little eye candy, but not too much. Uh, and again. Uh, yeah, if I run my finger across, I can feel the line, but barely. I don't, you know, I mean, I'd have to actually concentrate to feel the difference between the uh, bolster and the marble carbon fiber on it. So the fit, the finish is very, very tight, very, very well done. You can tell he worked incredibly hard on it. Um, this is the perfect... Yeah, here we go. This is the perfect uh, work of a handmade knife. I mean, if you look closely, you can see that the marble carbon fiber on this side might be a hair thinner than it is on this one, but you have to look really close, uh, you know, to see that here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, it's like a little thicker here, maybe a hair thinner over here. And these are like little details. When you get your knife, you're going to look at it and go, yeah, it's... But you, you'd have to look really close. Otherwise, it's incredibly symmetrical. How about I say that? It's just really symmetrical. So let's go ahead and do some size comparison so you guys can get an idea of the size of this knife. Um, so let's go ahead and start with a small one. How about the ZT0900? Right? And how about the large uh, Sebenza 21? How about the Benchmade Anthem? 
I think that's about right. And how about the... Let's see here, the Spyderco Swish Bowie. Which is actually the same size as the Trevor Burger Lex K. Uh, zero five six two. So as you guys can see, it's a medium knife, and I'm gonna put one last one up on here, uh, so you guys can see that it's a medium sized knife. Here's the Sabenza twenty one. So there you have it. You've got uh, large, medium, and small. This is definitely a medium sized knife. <clears throat> so there you have it the Trevor Burger liner lock Trevor Burger uh, Lex K Plus liner lock knife uh, this ends part one of my video I just wanted to give you guys some quick specs quick look at the knife talk about the details of the knife and in part two I'm going to bring out the uh I'm going to bring out the uh, liner lock version of this knife so we can compare the liner lock version of the knife to the frame lock version of the knife. And I will see you guys in just a bit.